what's up you guys, it's Adana, welcome back to my channel. So you guys, Casper opens up tomorrow. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. Another cycle of PA school applications is beginning. And I know many of you have been waiting slash dreading this moment slash really like actually like waiting for this moment to happen. And so I'm gonna make a video on it because I wanted to talk to you guys about how you should be preparing for CASPA, how you should be tackling CASPA, um, and really I guess kind of what CASPA is for those of you that don't know. So for those of you that do not know what CASPA is, CASPA is our central application website um, for like PA school. This is where you will go to um, actually apply to PA school. It's kind of like nursing CAS. I think it's the, it's the same company that actually like d does both systems or you're like your MCAS, but it is a central application site. So literally you put all of your information into CASPA and then you send off those separate applications to all of those different schools from CASPA. So CASPA is opening up tomorrow, like I said, and that means that you all should like already be prepared. And if you're not prepared, then you should be preparing yourself. So with respect to things that you should be doing or thinking about doing, or like, I mean, you're having some time right now to do this as you're watching this video is ensuring, you know, who your letters of recommendation is going to be coming from. Um, and also looking at like your transcripts, you know, making sure that you have all of that information down. So like I said before, it's important for you to be prepared. So when you are preparing for a CASPA, it's important for you to have every single thing that you know um, you're gonna need, like your GPA, your science GPA, um, your personal statement, all of those things ready uh, so that once CASPA opens, you can start your application and input all that information because it can be a lengthy process. Now, this is obviously a video for those of you that are trying to apply to PA school this year, but it's also a video for any of you that are trying to apply to PA school in the future because I wanna give you guys a tip that I came about um, that I think would actually be very beneficial to anyone that is trying to apply to PA school, but you're gonna have to stay a little bit later on in the video to get that tip um, because I'll, I'll address it. So again, with respect to CASPA, right? So you're gonna go to the CASPA website. I will leave a link for that. And you're going to open up CASPA and sign up for your particular application, right? So you're gonna put in all of your personal information and it's important for you to also have the information of your parents if you're in like your 20s because you can get a FAFSA. <laughs> Sorry, yes, that's such a tongue twister to me. I mean, I'm, I'm so used to saying FAFSA, but that's not it. So it's F-A-F-S-A. -S -S so you can get a loan like that through, um, you know, to, to actually apply to PA school. Uh, so, it's important that you have your parents' information or your own information, honestly. So if you're older than, you know, your early to mid twenties, um, you've kind of been working and doing your own thing, you're adulting, then you would need your, your tax returns from last year. And I know like this whole coronavirus situation throws everything kind of out of whack, but CASPA is still operating as it operated before. So you're still gonna need all of that information. Once you put that information in, your personal information, um, then you can move on to the next sections. CASPA is broken up into four different sections. So you have like your personal information, your coursework, um, any like, which will have like your letters of recommendation and all of that stuff in it. There are various different sections that you're gonna have to fill out. So give yourself some time to actually like go through and be able to tackle each uh, section efficiently because each section has subsections, right? So once you've gotten all of your personal information taken care of, I suggest that you actually kind of reach out to those individuals that you are going to be getting your letters of recommendation from. So it's important for you to just kind of preface them with the fact that, hey, you know, CASPA is about to open up or CASPA recently opened up. I know that you agreed to do a letter of recommendation for me. And so I just wanted to let you know that they will be sending you um, a link and you just have to click on the link and input 
the letter of recommendation that you wrote for me and just follow the prompts because this is not something like where they're giving you a letter and saying here you know here's your letter no they actually have to put it into um, the link so that it can be attached to your actual application so it's important for you to just kind of forewarn them about that because sometimes it can go into their spam and then they're there sitting like thinking oh okay well you know they'll send me that the letter of recommendation information when they're ready and it's in their spam. And now you're like just wasting time as you know, you're trying to get this letter of recommendation from somebody that should have already done it if they were well informed. So number one thing after all of your personal information in it is in is to go ahead and get those letters of recommendation people, um, the information that they need so that they're waiting for this when you actually send them the letter through CASPA. The next thing is you really should be saving. So you should have been saving um, money to apply for PA school uh, a while ago, but I mean, now um, you really should be saving as well. And again, like I know that, you know, money is tight and um, things are rough, but you this is where you're going to actually like be very strategic in choosing what schools you want to apply to because the first uh, school for CASPA is always $175 and then each subsequent program is $55. So it can rack up in cost if you're applying to multiple schools, but if you're very strategic and you use some of those little tips that I said, or even like my PA box and you go through and you see what schools that you have matched with, you choose those top five or top three or top four schools and you go from there. And then as money comes in in the future, then you can apply to schools later later down on your list, I guess you can say. So save up your money, um, be strategic in the schools that you're applying to, um, because again, you're gonna be able to see when those deadlines are, but all of that information will be needed for you to understand exactly like where you're at in the cycle and um, kind of what kind of applicant you will be. Are you gonna be a strong applicant or not, depending on the program that you're applying to. So the next thing that you all should actually be looking at is your undergraduate program or your grad school that you graduated from. Um, whatever schooling you have is getting the transcripts from them. And again, like we've been on this like online learning platform for the longest, but there should be something that's put in place for you all to be able to actually get your transcripts um, so that you're able to send those to CASPA because you have to send your transcripts to CASPA because CASPA has to calculate your GPA. So CASPA participates in uh, National Student Clearinghouse, Parchment, and there's one, oh, and Credential Solutions. So those are like the online transcript bodies, I guess you can say. I don't even really know what to call them, but they're where you can like request your transcript online from your school and then they'll send them to various different places. CASPA uh, actually participates with them. So what that means for you is you don't have to go to your school because your school may be closed, like most schools are, to actually get your transcript. So that is a plus. Hopefully that, that makes the process a lot smoother and easier, but um, you don't want to rely on that. So you want to make sure that you're kind of getting this done very early in your whole application process so that when you are ready to apply, you're not still waiting on a transcript. Because I told you all, if whatever you verify your CASPA application with, whatever information you have, that's it. Nothing else that comes in after your application has been verified will count towards your application. So it's important for you to make sure that everything that you want in that CASPA application is in there before you verify it. And verifying it means like you're paying the 175, you're applying to your first school, CASPA is going through your application, calculating your GPA and all of that information. Okay, um, and now I told you all in the beginning that if you wanted to if apply to PA school in the future that you should actually stay on this video because there's something that I wanted to tell you, a little tip that I learned, and now is the time for that. So with respect to your thinking of ap applying to PA school in a year or two years, I think that you should still open up a CASPA application and start putting in your information. So what I've learned is um, when I called CASPA like a few months back when, you know, way before this whole 
lockdown happened was that you can come back to CASPA as a reapplicant. And by no means does this affect your application in the future to PA schools because PA schools can't see like, oh, you were a reapplicant and now you're applying again if you never applied to their program. Right. Um, so when you come and you actually like start the application, you put in all of that information, you kind of save it, but you do not apply to any schools when CASPA closes in the month of March and then reopens again in April, uh, then you can always come back as a reapplicant. You you would click the ch the choice. It gives you an option to say, are you a new applicant or reapplicant? You pick reapplicant, and then the majority of the information that you put in before actually transfers over. And so what that means for you is you're ahead of the game, right? So you don't have to spend weeks slash a month or days inputting new information into CASPA because a lot of that information would have already transferred over. There are only a few things that do not transfer over um, from what I gathered when I spoke to CASPA, which was your letters of recommendation and then your personal statements or any of the essays that you would have had to write. Now, I mean, to write an essay or your personal statement, you're gonna save that on your computer anyway, so that's not a big deal that that doesn't transfer over. And then with respect to your letters of recommendation, I mean, if you're using the same person in the future or if you want somebody new, like it's not that big of a deal to actually be able to like reach out to somebody and ask them to get a new letter of recommendation. So of all the important things, like all of your personal information, um, obviously like your, you know, like any of your transcript stuff, um, your actual like GRE scores or your PA CAT scores, you know, that might happen in the future. All of that stuff is still, is it's going to transfer over. And so that is important because now you are ahead of everybody else leaps and bounds. So I would suggest that you all take advantage of this as well, even though you're not planning on applying still open up an application, fill out all the information, and then close the application down and just wait until you're ready to apply because that will help you out a lot. So lastly, I just want you all to just kind of take a breath. Um, you know, you've been waiting on this moment, but it, like just take your time, you know, not too much time, but take your time in your application, right? Make sure that you are going through it with a fine tooth comb. Make sure that you're looking at each particular section and you're not missing anything because you want to familiarize yourself with CASPA. You want to go through the various different four sections that they have and make sure that you're putting that information in so that you are putting your best application forward because you don't want that you made like a silly mistake on the application and then now you like your whole PA school application is ruined for it. And I mean, simple things like that can happen if you aren't paying attention. So with all that I've said about preparing for CASPA and actually going through this application and what transfers over and what doesn't and, you know, what saving money and whatnot, I think like the biggest thing that you can take away from this is to actually just take your time with the application and make sure that you're being very meticulous with how you're going through and filling out this information. Um, at the end of the day, you can only do your best and that's all that, you know, we're asking or anybody's asking of you is to like do your best and put your best work forward. Um, and then if whatever you put forward is your best, then you can be happy with that. Uh, I wish you guys many blessings on this application cycle. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot different in terms of actual like virtual interviews and things like that than any time before because of the current climate that we're in, but I am sure that you guys are going to do great. So just keep me posted on that. If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Like my video, it helps me out a lot um, for that YouTube algorithm. So please hit that like button and tell your friends to hit it as well. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.